thieves, scavengers, killers. That's what a lot of people think of when they see hyenas. But that's not the real story. This hyena is actually just a mum. With hungry babies at home that she needs to feed. And look at these adorable little guys. How can you not love them? Hey team, welcome to another video. If it's your first time here, I'm Jules. As a wildlife cameraman, I've followed and filmed animals across the globe. Now I'm sharing some of my adventures with you. Today we're following the journey of a hyena mum as she heads home to feed her young cubs and we're busting some of the myths that surround hyenas along the way. I'll show you why everything you thought you knew about hyenas might be a lie. Let's go. The Lion King cartoon brought the wilds of Africa to the world. I grew up in the 90s, and I know for me it was part of the reason I made filming wildlife my life's work. For many people it was their first introduction to a land filled with giraffe, elephant, and yes, adorable singing lion cubs. But it also gave hyenas a really bad reputation. One that's lasted over 25 years. The thing is, movies need goodies and baddies. More on that later. And hyenas? Well, they drew the short straw. In this series, we're telling the hyenas side of the story and showing them in a different light. Today, we'll follow the journey of a mother hyena on her way back to the den to feed her hungry babies. Hyenas live in family groups called clans. Their homes are called dens. This one is adapted from an old termite mound. I filmed hyenas using this den since 2013, and they're still living there. Cubs like this little guy are black for the first few weeks of their lives, and only develop their characteristic spots as they grow. When they're little like this, they're super cute. They start off timid, but they quickly become curious, and a little pushy at times. They grow quickly, so their mum needs to make sure her milk is as nutritious as possible. The clan's territory is along the river, in the Ensefu sector of South Luangwa National Park. It's full of dangers. Crocodiles in the water, and rival predators all around. Even the giraffe out here can kill you. Right now, Mum is up north, far away from the den, looking for food. It's quiet now, but it's been a violent morning. Lions have killed a buffalo. With full bellies, they're resting in the shade nearby. And here's a familiar sight. Hyenas scavenging. It's what they're best known for. But it's not the whole story. This time it was the lions that made this kill. But hyenas are fully capable of making their own kills. And lions are actually just as likely to steal from hyenas as the other way around. Hyena society is dominated by hierarchy. Although this is a family group, when it comes to food, they'll fight, like me and my sisters used to over Cocoa Pops. <laughs> Mothers have to work especially hard to get the best, most nutrient-rich food they can, so they can pass all that good stuff on to their cubs. But right now, the lions want their kill back. And this is the sound that hyenas are most known for. Their laugh. One of their names is actually Laughing Hyenas. But there's nothing funny here. A hyena laugh or giggle is actually a sign of stress or excitement. This sound effect is put over the top of hyenas doing all kinds of things. Getting ready to hunt. Planning a lion cub's demise. People think they're laughing like a cartoon villain while he plots to kill the hero. <laughs> but that's one of the biggest myths about hyenas. I see a hyena's laugh as a kind of, hey, 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 leave me alone. Like when a bunch of clan members gang up on you. Or a 250 pound angry lion is trying to rip your head off. A full clan of hyenas will give lions a run for their money. But a small group like this are no match for them. 
so mum will have to find another meal as she heads back to the den. And a journey through a wilderness like this won't be easy. South Langwa is an incredible place, filled with all the wonder and beauty you'd expect from Africa. For me, being right in nature like this makes me feel alive. Everywhere you look there's something to see, and every corner you turn could lead to an adventure. For our hyena, it's just the same. Although hyenas are good hunters, mum is no match for these giraffe. She's just being curious. Giraffes can weigh over a ton and have a kick that would knock your head off. So mum continues the journey down the river. The river runs roughly north to south and forms the boundary to her territory. Hyenas can cross the water when it's low like this, but there are a lot, I mean a lot of crocodiles, so it's mostly not worth it. A young hippo has died. Hundreds of crocodiles arrive to feast on the carcass. Now I know for a lot of you this is pretty full on to watch, and honestly when I'm filming it I feel the same. But this is real nature here, and it's all part of the circle of life. The best view is from in the river, so sometimes I'll drive my vehicle into the water to get a croc's eye view of the action. It's a pretty crazy experience to be sitting in a river surrounded by huge crocodiles tearing a carcass to pieces. Sometimes carcasses will wash up on the shore and then all kinds of animals will take advantage of the feast. Like this pride of lions, who are so full they can't even be bothered getting up as our hyena mum walks past. Hyenas and lions are natural enemies, but animals don't like conflict, it's super risky. So if there's no food to fight over or young to protect, it's worth picking your battles. It's something I'm learning too. Whose turn is it to cook dinner tonight? It's getting hot now, and the temperature is soaring. Predators tend to be more active at night. They've got good nocturnal vision which gives them an advantage, but I think it's also because the amount of energy they have to exert to bring down prey during the day is extreme. Imagine doing a full body workout in a sauna and you've got some idea, some idea of what it's like out here. So in the heat of the day it's worth finding a nice shady spot to rest, or cool off in the water pools which form in the riverbed. It's also the time when lots of animals go to drink. Large herds like these buffalo will mostly drink at the river, but there are smaller water holes which become more like mud pools as the dry season takes its toll. Mud's also a really good way for herbivores to get rid of pests and parasites. Imagine being covered in flies and biting insects, but not having any arms or hands to scratch the itch. That's what it's like for herbivores. Covering themselves in mud is actually really soothing and a great way to remove parasites. Letting it dry is like a face mask for buffalo, but instead of clearing your pores, it lifts away some of the ticks in those hard to reach places. I've actually hopped into one of these mud pools before. It was really relaxing, except for all the slimy things wriggling around under my feet. That was pretty gross. Unfortunately the mud is thick and sometimes buffalo that are weakened by the heat or by starvation get trapped. The herd leaves, but the buffalo is stuck fast. The more she struggles, the more she sinks. As the afternoon wears on, the buffalo stop struggling and vultures gather in the skies. Most vultures need other animals to open up the carcass before they can start feeding, so hyenas are super helpful. Vultures and hyenas often go together, like peanut butter and cheese on toast. No? <laughs> hyenas have an uncanny ability to find food. Whether it's hearing the sounds of an animal in distress from kilometers away, or their incredible sense of smell that leads them to food, they're first on the scene more often than not. And scientists have shown that hyenas can use the sight of vultures circling in the sky to pinpoint the position of carcasses and lead them straight to an easy meal. So vultures are really important to hyenas too. When I'm filming and looking for predators, I take a leaf out of the hyenas book and also use vultures as a sign that predators might be nearby. 
We can learn a lot from animals. Because they're mostly nocturnal, it's been hard to film hyenas hunting. But now that we have thermal cameras, we're able to see what animals get up to in the dead of night. As the sun sets, Mum and other members of the clan arrive and put the buffalo out of its misery. It seems brutal, I know, but if lions had found it first, they'd have done the same. Predators eat prey. It's what they were born to do. The hyenas feed quietly without their characteristic whoops. They don't want the lions showing up and stealing their meal. People sometimes ask why I don't intervene when animals get stuck like this. It may seem harsh, but for me, I'm there to document what animals naturally do in the wild. And as far as possible, I want to make sure I'm not changing anything. So if what happened to them is natural, I don't step in. But what if I did, and I pulled the buffalo out? What about the hyenas? They've got cubs back at the den to feed. Would you rob them of a meal? Hyenas are unusual in that they're able to exploit much more of a carcass than other predators. With a bite twice as strong as a dog, they're one of the few animals that can crush bones. That's right, crush bones with their mouths and digest it. Often they have so much calcium in their diet, their poop actually turns white. When they leave, the vultures can step in and clean up the carcass. Things get pretty chaotic. So our hyena mum heads back to the den, belly full and ready to feed her hungry youngsters. Now you've seen they're not just scavengers, but on TV it's what we see them doing most of the time. And I think that's why people have this view of them as thieves. You guys already know, or are starting to understand, that they're far more complicated than we give them credit for. But there are a lot of people out there who think that hyenas are just straight evil. There are plenty of superstitions around hyenas among indigenous communities, and the reasons for these are very complex. But for most people, it's TV and movies that have sold them the lie that lions are the good guys and hyenas are the bad guys, and that's not the truth. But Hollywood's not the only ones reinforcing this myth. The reality with the films we make as wildlife producers is that we need goodies and baddies for stories to work. And the way we create films makes a difference to how you as the audience interpret wildlife behavior. I'm doing it right now, and I'll show you what I mean. Here's the setup. Our hyena is nearly home, but she's encountered a final challenge. There are a couple of ways this could play out on screen. These wild dogs are wearing research collars, so scientists can track the movements of the pack. With less than 5,000 in the wild, every dog counts. A hyena is a threat to the pack's young. The pack must chase this intruder off and teach her a lesson she won't forget. So the hyena's the bad guy, right? Let's watch it again. Her young cubs are waiting back at the den. Without their mother, they won't survive. Alone, she hasn't got a chance against a pack of wild dogs. If they catch her, they'll attack and could even kill her. She needs to run. So you see, it's all in the presentation. And the reality of filmmaking is that you have to pick sides. But there's often more to the story than meets the eye. Life in the wild is harsh, and only the strongest survive. But you can't have a story without a hero. And you can't have a goodie without a baddie. So far, hyenas have had a raw deal. But we're changing that, right? A new clan of hyena lovers. When people tell me they don't like hyenas, one of the reasons they'll often give is the way they look. And sure, a fully grown adult hyena has a few scars. They might be missing an ear or two. But why would you hold that against them? Hyenas' lives are tough, and they have to battle every day to survive. It's a hard, cruel world in the wild, where every day could be your last. Those that survive have been through a lot. And who wouldn't look a little rough around the edges after fighting every day of your life? For me, when I see a hyena weathered by life in the wild, I think those scars are just their story. Maybe it's that way with people too. I hope you've enjoyed our adventure today. In the next video, we'll be following the story of a young hyena cub and some of the challenges she faces as she grows up wild. 
Well, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you've got any questions about hyenas, please let me know in the comments below. As always, make sure you like and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time. Stay wild. Let us know what you enjoyed in the comments below. Which myth do we bust?